and welcome back. Thank you for tuning into the show. This is the unnamed second part of our podcast, which is where myself and Mr. Dia Hassan sit down and chat all things mindset, leadership, personal growth, all fun stuff like that. Less corporate, not so much of the interviews with the likes of Facebook and Snapchat and, and others, um, but we get to we get to jam on things that we love. Yeah, it's definitely one we have like very little time to prepare for these things. <laughs> we try to deviate a little bit. What do you mean? Bit. I was up super early preparing for this. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, I think, I think the more sort of like conversational chats that we normally have as well outside of the Absolutely. podcast platform, we wanted to bring that uh, to this platform. Yep. Hopefully to, to shed some light and uh, drop some value. Well, that's it, man. I mean, look, we, we, we spend a lot of time together through work and, and outside of work, and we have a lot of these sort of conversations. Yeah. So, you know, from, from feedback that we've had when we've touched on some of these subjects within the podcast structure, um, they've actually performed really well. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so yeah, let's, um, let's jam on, uh, on, on a few of these. So Somebody what are we talking get, about today, mate? Uh, so yeah, I think, I think it's, sorry, I got distracted. Somebody didn't get the memo about the door. <laughs> it's amazing. There's a big sign <laughs> on the yeah. door right behind me. There's a big sign on the door but that still. says podcast in process. Please be quiet. Please do but not open this door. That kind of relates. Really. The door is locked. <laughs> But yet somehow <laughs> somebody wants to storm through the somehow, door. But that somehow, kind of <laughs> yeah. relates maybe nicely to the to the topic of today is decision making, right? Decision There's making. a massive sign in front of you. It yeah. says don't open the door, but still. <laughs> Your decision um, is to open the door. <laughs> so I think I think look, you know, we, we talked a little bit about uh the decision making process that we all have to go through. And yeah. you know, we're always faced in life from the moment we wake up to the to the moment we go to sleep. Sometimes they're big decisions, sometimes they're small decisions, but they could over time, you know, cultivate into this a lifestyle maybe or something bigger that would, uh, you know, that would drive who, who you are from like eating habits, mm. choosing the right thing, you know, and these could be smaller decisions, but you'll, if you're always eating pancakes and, and, and cupcakes and stuff like this, <clears throat> 10 years down the line, you're going to have issues, right? And Absolutely. they may seem small, but there's, there's a compounding effect uh, that, that'll affect you. How to approach big decisions. Sometimes, you know, we get crippled by the value or the weight of a decision because mm. it's so significant and can change your life or someone else's life so you know so, yeah. so much that you need to stop and think about it so there's different ways to take a decision and i think we're going to be talking about that yeah mate, look i think it's um <laughs> it's a really valuable subject because i think it's underestimated the skill that revolves around um, decision making decision making is not a singular event it's it's a process and it needs to be understood as such, um, whether it's making decisions in personal life, whether it's making decisions in, in, in a professional life, there are some, there are some decisions that you know are highly impactful mm. when you're making them. Do you move country for a new job? Do you move companies uh, for, for a new job? Um, the partner that you choose, those, exactly, are, yeah. those are significant decisions that you know are, are, are life-changing in one way or yeah. another. But as you alluded to a second ago, there are a lot of decisions that are made on an ongoing basis that when you look back, you're like, wow, that was actually probably one of the most important decisions in my life. And exactly. I just kind of floated through it and luckily it worked out, yeah. but it might've gone in a different direction and, and that could mean all sorts of things, the butterfly effect of, yeah. of multiple small decisions. But it does, yeah. it's, um, it, it's, it, it's interesting how it's approached or to be honest, from what we've seen is, is there is a lack of approach. People don't understand the process that goes into making a decision from a, um, a conscious or a subconscious perspective. Mm. And I think that's the that's what we want to get into today, unpacking some of that so people can just be a little bit more aware around, right, I've got a big decision to make or I'm making a lot of smaller decisions, but that's, I've got yeah. no process yeah. and I don't really understand what biases I have and how it's being affected <laughs> and how I, I should really be aware of that. 100%. I think the, the, the maybe the other side of the conscious behavior is I'm just going to go with the flow. Right. So there is a lot of people that I know. And that's a decision. And exactly. Yeah. And, and understanding what that flow, where is that flow coming from? Where's mm -hmm. your gut feeding coming from? It is, you know, it is part of the conditioning. It is part of an experiences that you've gone through. But it's also understanding that by itself, that is actually you taking a decision, but kind of blaming it on this gut feeling that you're getting. That Absolutely. I'm just I, I feel like going this way. But again, that's an informed decision, but you need to understand where is that information coming from? Mm. So we'll touch on both. Uh, but to start yeah. with, I think, you know, maybe taking it a little bit to the personal life. I mean, I mean let's, let's have a simpler choice here. When, you, when you you're, are you going to talk about the marathon again? No, 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 no. <laughs> You made the decision. How, well, <laughs> tell me, how, how did do you I get, get out of it? <laughs> how did you get to this decision? That you decided you no, no, no we marathon. talked about that last uh, in the last episode. If you haven't checked it out, you can go and <laughs> listen to the last episode. But, you know, we, we were chatting a little bit about this when 
your mind wants you to think in a certain way. Like if you're buying a new car, for example, mm. before buying the car, you you know, you'd be browsing different cars, but as soon as you have your mind set on something, yeah. that that car is gonna be the only thing you see on the street. Absolutely. So like you are getting into this tunnel vision approach to the decision that in a way that you wanna make in, yeah. in life. So there's, and, and we were, you know, chatting about when you're gathering information. Of course, the first step is there's a decision to be made. We need to understand and identify that cool, like, there's a choice that you have to make in a certain situation in life. Yeah. Second stage would be gathering information. Absolutely. Um, but how do you gather information? Mm. Is it biased? Is it not biased? And what's your thoughts on that like? Well, look, I, I think the, the first point that you said there, it's about it's identifying that there's a decision to be made. And sometimes, quite often, you see people shying away from that. And it goes back to your point about, oh, we'll go with the flow. Let's see how life works out. Let's just kind of, let's just play this out and see what happens. And you're putting one foot into the area of victim mindset there because you're basically you're you're stepping away from taking ownership of the outcome yeah and you're just going to kind of see how things play yeah, out and, out, and yeah. then you can blame somebody else or something else or the situation the or the situation because yeah. because you, you know that it wasn't you that made the decision in order to go left or to go right so there's there's it it starts from the beginning right you have to identify that there is a decision to be made something's not quite working out for you and it goes back to also quite often the biggest changes in direction in personal life come from a moment of pain. Mm. Something goes drastically wrong. And what that actually is, is a wake up call to say, mm. you've been going in the wrong direction. You've been doing the wrong thing. And it's a big slap around the face because yeah. it's it's come to an acute point where you've gone, oh shit, that, that, was, that was a culmination of many things that I've been doing wrong. I need to change. Yeah. I yeah. need to do something different. I need to you know, make this decision to go left or to go right. So it, it starts from there, right? Then, when we were, as we were talking off camera a minute ago, around how do you how do you then gather information in order to make a decision? And that's where people fundamentally fall down mm -hmm. because they don't realize what goes into that. So, in order to make a, a decision, and let's look at different types of decisions. You've got strategic, you've got tactical, you've got operational. Let's stay strategic for a second, right? So, if you're trying to make a strategic decision, you need to gather a, a large amount of information from opposite sides of the line in mm. terms of different opinions, different viewpoints. And and also you need to question, this is what people don't, you need to question, why do I believe what I believe? Why is this piece of information important for me? And why is that going to have a significant impact on the decision I'm going to make? And this comes down to cognitive bias. And there's multiple different types of cognitive bias. And if we, if we look at one of them, for example, recency bias. Now, if I give you a piece of information today, and then you're asked about that subject tomorrow, you're going to put more value on that piece of information that you learned from me today than yeah. something you learned three or four weeks ago, just because it's recent. And yeah. that's like within how our minds work, how we're built, this recency bias shows up all the time. Like, you, you know, you read a headline in the newspaper, all of a sudden that's what you believe. Yeah. And that's what you then go and, oh, did you see this? Did you see yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. It might be completely contradictory to something that you learned two, three weeks yeah. ago, but because you've just read it, you now believe it's, more it, it holds more, more relevance more, 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 more value right yeah. so there are many of these things um, anchoring bias is another one which is the flip side of it yeah the very first piece of information you learn about a subject before you then yeah build on top of that can often cause you to sway your decision towards something that well that was where my understanding of this subject matter first started and you anchor yourself around that piece of information and everything that you then learn has to tie back into that first piece of information mm. and that's called anchoring bias yeah so People don't, yeah. people don't yeah, necessarily yeah. recognize this when they're making decisions, but, it's, but it's, as you can see, it's critically important. One hundred percent. And I think I think that's like I said, like that's where the trap could be while you're gathering the information and 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 you know looking looking at a decision. There's a lot of sometimes anxiety around making a decision, hmm. but I think it's important to note also that sometimes we don't have the luxury of time to gather information. Hmm. So I feel like decision ma decision making process could be viewed as well as a as a muscle or as an exercise that we we need to slow we need to kind of identify the workflow of what that situation requires yeah. but almost put ourselves in a conscious way or a conscious view that we understand how to go through that process in a very short period of time if required yeah. and that's what sometimes people confuse that with a gut feeling for example oh i feel it's probably this direction is the right way but even that gut feeling is informed by either experiences information that your brain is gathering that you're not aware of so there's yeah. a lot of processes but that the biases that, as well right 
Exactly. Also, why do exactly. you think that car is particularly cool? Is it because somebody that you think is cool has got yeah, that car? Driving, and, exactly. And in the back of your mind, like yeah. that's actually driving. Oh no, I want that. It's really cool. But yeah. that, you know, why do you like that car over that car? Is it? It's it's something completely irrelevant. Actually, it's got nothing yeah. to do with the car. It's uh, something to do with somebody else, right? True. But True. if we look at the different types of decisions, the strategic decisions need to have time and um you need to approach it in a very different way than an operational decision. Mm. I agree with you. We're in business, right? So we have to make decisions very quickly all the time. There's a lot of people involved. There's a lot of clients involved. And quite often, we're getting bombarded by questions that we have to make quick decisions. Mm. Now, we're never going to make a strategic decision in a snap. You just can't because mm. you'll at some point, you'll become unstuck. But I, I fully agree with you that you have to have a framework for quick decision making, but they can be operational or tactical decisions. Yeah. And that fits within you know what is your framework. And then we can talk about what is a framework for decision making? Yeah, exactly. And I think there's, you know, there's there's multiple factors that that play, you know, play a val- or add value to the process of you taking a decision. One of them is the information, like we said. Mm. Second factor is time. Do we have time to, you know, to gather information, or is this a quick decision process? Yeah. Uh, third is the cause and effect. Is that decision that you're about to take has a a, a big volume of magnitude of effect on yourself or yeah. somebody else? Or is this like a you know a, a minor decision? Is it reversible that, as well? Exactly, one hundred percent. Is it reversible or not? And the the, the 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 fourth one is, what's your emotional attachment to the decision, hmm. and what's your limiting beliefs around the decision? So a lot of times, you know, we a lot of people shy away from taking decisions, thinking that indecisiveness is a decision by itself, right? Which which it is. Yeah. But in a way, if you if you look at the reason why they're not taking a decision, it could sometimes even be that there is a limiting belief around. In, in their in their mind or in their in their self that they can't achieve something this is not for them right so yeah. that's what we talked about last uh, last podcast so removing yourself from that from that framework and mindset plays a big role in the way that you you approach things and you decide on on smaller or bigger decisions as well um you know the the emotional factor Absolutely. is something that we try to separate most of the time you know we, we try to be mm. subjective okay can we look at the information without having the emotion but I think they both you know, hand in hand have a, an importance in the process of taking those uh, those decisions. Well, absolutely. We see limiting beliefs affecting decision making all of the time, whether it's somebody putting themselves forward for something, whether it's, you know, putting their hand up to say, you know what, I can I can do this. I can take this on. I believe that I will be able to grow into the person that can deliver this or that. Yeah. Um, you know, we, if we see it in the personal space, whether it's somebody taking on a fitness challenge or not, there's often a limiting belief that people tell themselves, oh, no, I'm not uh, designed for yeah, this. Yeah. I'm, I shouldn't yeah. do that. You know, how many times have yeah, we spoken exactly. over time? Like, no, I'm not a runner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. This is, this is the biggest lot of shit I've ever heard. Everybody's, everyone's a runner. You just yeah. you need to get yourself to the exactly. point where you can run distance, yeah, yeah. but we're all human beings built. We can run. Yeah. We can you got run. two legs, you can run. That's it, right? <laughs> yeah. but, but I hear from a lot of people like, uh, oh, no, I had a, a knee operation 12 years ago. Cool. What have you done about that? Yeah. You know, why, why is it? It's, it's instantly. That's a limiting belief, it's right? It's instantly a limiting belief. Yeah. Because I had a knee operation, therefore I can't. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get into the medical side of it. There are some instances where that's physically not possible. But honestly, sure. the vast majority. Yeah, yeah. I've had reconstructive knee surgery and run multiple <laughs> ultra marathons since. That it's just, it, it, there's no difference from, from me to the other person that had the same yeah. operation. It's just the the narrative I told myself in my head. I told myself that I'll fix this and I'll do that. Yeah. Whereas they've decided to say, I can't do that because of this. And then that, that becomes their their anchor and their yeah. safety blanket to say, yeah. oh, no, no, I can't put myself into into this challenge and, and position of judgment. Because of that because, story that be, you're Because of the story that you're telling yourself, yeah. which is a limiting belief. Exactly. Right? And there's, I mean, the, the, you know, there's also another trap that maybe you should talk about is sometimes, you know, a lot of people want to make sure that they're taking the right decision so much that they get paralyzed with mm. the amount of information that they're seeking. Absolutely, yeah. So information paralysis, par- paralysis right? <clears throat> so I think yeah. that's very important to, to think about. You know, the, the the simplest form, I would say, is when you sat on the couch looking at Netflix, is, and how long does it take you to decide on what movie to watch or what documentary to watch on Netflix? And way sometimes, long, exactly, long. right? Way too long. It's like, and when you think about it, that's a, a perfect example of, of, you know, the option paralysis as well. Yeah. So the more that you open yourself to like a lot of options, you're just limiting yourself with that decision-making process. They say that in the human mind, you know, giving people between five to seven options is normally what a person would be feeling comfortable with and yeah. taking a choice with. Anything over that becomes a bit distracting, right? Okay. Um, and so, then, unless we're pitching a campaign to a client and we give them two options. Exactly, <laughs> right? Two so like, where do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, uh, you know, and it's important to, 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 to keep that in mind because sometimes you can get stuck yeah. while you're seeking information or even 
you know, looking out to what is the best choice for you to make. And I think that for me also kind of leads to the to, to to a point which is important, which is some in some situations, mm. no matter what decision you take or what direction you want to take in life, that decision of opening a new business, you know, taking a career up or whatever it is, yeah. could either go really good for you or really bad for you, mm. depending on your work ethic that you attach to that decision. So a lot of times it's not just about the decision, but it's about what else are you it's doing like, around you back, that decision. Back it up, right? Exactly, hundred yeah. percent. So there was a story I, I was listening to where a guy just opened, and the story is here in Dubai actually. A guy opened a food truck business hmm. before before the Corona lockdown, and um, you know he he invested about seven hundred thousand dirhams in it, opened like three different uh, branches and set up a menu, and you know he he was kind of pushing it, but he did he wasn't involved in day to day, and that business wasn't really doing well. After a few years and, and about a million dirhams and losses, he decided to sell the business to a new owner. Uh, of course, around Corona time, you know, he was limiting yeah. his he was limiting his losses. Sold it probably for around three hundred k, and thought, "Cool, I've limited my losses. Now I sold the business to somebody else." A year down the line, he went back to see those trucks and see how things are going. He was a bit curious, like, "Is this business really doing well or not?" And realized that the same businesses, of course, locations change a little bit, but now there's a massive line in front of these trucks. And business yeah. is booming. Yeah, he got one of his cousins to call that new owner to see if the business is again for sale. He's like, "Look, I've I've been offered it multiple times, but I'm not selling it." He sold that business for three hundred thousand, and yeah. the new owner is like, "I've just been offered three million wow. uh, for the same business. I'm not willing to sell." So it's not about the idea or the decision of of starting the business. It's about what's happening around that. Whether you, choose, whether you choose to make it exactly. work or not, and 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 that's going to be the, the the defining factor of whether this decision is going to be successful or not, right? So, that's very important to 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 it, think about as well. You're right; it's really powerful, and people often think that the decision is the final point. Once the decision is made, then it's the starting yeah, point. Then, then, then <laughs> yeah. it, it is the starting point, right? And often people think once that decision is made, then it's either going this way or it's going this way. No, you then have to make that happen in yeah. one way or another, right? And I think one of the things that we haven't touched on yet is is understanding. Look, there's a process of uh, of decision making, and there's, as we said, there's confirmation biases, there's cognitive biases that that feed into the building blocks of how we make those decisions. But a decision le- needs to lead you somewhere, and if you haven't figured out where that somewhere is, then it's very difficult to make a decision because you don't know if you're getting closer to True. the destination, the goal, whatever it is. You know, in in a, in a personal life, it can be a um, it, it can be a goal that we set ourselves. In your case, you know, we, we're discussing the marathon. Yeah, yeah. Or it could be somebody uh, having a, a career plan or whatever it might be. But once you've defined that, then it's that is that that is a framework for decision making because you you basically say to yourself, does it get me closer to my goal or does it not get me closer yeah. to my goal? And therefore, you can make some faster decisions. Certainly on an operational and tactical level, you can make faster decisions because you know where you're trying to exactly. go. Exactly. If you haven't exactly. figured that out, it's very difficult. It's true. In the business sense, as the work that we've been doing is building out a mission statement if you've got a vision and mission statement for your company again even strategically to a to a to an extent yeah. when we're making decisions yeah. big decisions we look at that we've is done a lot, we've done a, we've done a lot of work to get to that yeah. point does it get us closer to that vision or does it align with our mission statement and the reason mm. for being in, mm. in business and if it's a no it's quite a easy decision we don't even have to speak about it because we both know it's a no yeah. because we've decided yeah, yeah. that that's the direction we're going in and if and you know if people spend the time really defining where their destination is and what it looks like and really spending time like granular on a granular level making making sure they understand where mm. it is that they're going all of this decision making becomes a lot more e- uh, becomes a lot easier easier of course Absolutely. Uh, as soon as you identify your north star right so that's whether you know and, and that's from a business sense i guess achieving certain uh, you know market share or goals or uh, as in like you know um, it could be monetary or it could be more time ownership mm. on your day right yeah. like i just want to be a bit more free in my day i, I want to buy back my time so there's a lot of different ways to think about making those decisions and i think you know whatever your journey is everyone is everyone has their own journey in life and and all of them are valuable but i think the framework of making that decision could apply for both when it comes to a business when it comes to your personal life choosing a partner choosing a car yeah so it's you know it's it's following a certain a very simple but also you know, objective steps to understand how much information can you gather? Is it neutral type of information? Yes, how objective Are, is that exactly. information? Right? And, and, and you know, is there an emotional factor that's playing a role in your decision-making uh, process? Yes or no? Um, you know, and is that decision reversible? Yeah. And that's, I guess, that, that that's a key one because if it's not, then 
it's definitely worth stopping and, and thinking about that decision a little yeah. bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> but if it is reversible, and f- I'm guilty of that, I like to maybe sometimes dive nose deep, like stress. Was, yeah. Is this nose deep? <laughs> but like yeah, dive in straight away. And I, I sometimes say, let's just do it and then we'll figure it out along the way. Yeah. Right. So, but the, the denominator for me is as long as I know that that decision to go in a certain direction follows the the North Star, right? So if yeah. it's if it doesn't align with the North Star, then I'd I wouldn't be no, doing no. it. But if it does align with the North Star, and I feel that our ducks is not in a row, yeah. I'll say no, fuck it, let's do it. Yeah, and then we'll figure shit out on the way. Yeah. So but it's also the it's understanding what's the damage that can be done if it goes wrong. And quite often yeah. with those smaller decisions or those operational decisions, that like there's not that much damage. The the, the if it went south on you, yeah. you can still. Yeah. claw that back it's not going to cost too much money too much time too much mm. resource um richard branson talks a lot about protecting the downside so when he's making decisions it's like right well there's always going to be an element of risk with a decision when decision making however if you look at the downside what are the what are the things that could go wrong if if i get this completely wrong yeah um what's the damage that's caused is it reversible and is it something that i can accept and as long as each decision you make you've understood what that downside is yeah. and not just being blinded by the opportunity and that can be quite yeah. Let's say enticing. It, it can be yeah, enticing, yeah. right? You're like, yeah. oh, wow, this opportunity is incredible and I can do this and I might achieve this and blah, 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 blah. But if it goes south on you, it's catastrophic. Yeah. You can't make that decision. Yeah. So protecting the downside um, is, yeah, is critically important as well. 100%. 100%. Um, yeah, I think, I think in, in general, that kind of like sums up you know the uh, the the process and the yeah. workflow. I think of uh, there's actually one more area that that's it's actually a it's a bit 180 to what we've been talking about, but it's something I heard on a podcast from um, from Stephen in the UK. Uh, I think it was the Diary of a CEO. His uh, his podcast and, and yeah. he's put it in his book as well, which talks about the ability to quit. And he talks about um, people have this idea that once you start something, you absolutely have to finish it, right? Which is something that we're, we're taught. It's a socially acceptable kind of mm-hmm. way of thinking that you, know, you start something, you've got to, you, you've got to see it through and, and deliver it, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. Now, there is a flip side to this because this also ties in with something called the sunk cost fallacy. If you've spent time, money, resource in a certain direction, you are almost subconsciously obliged mm. to continue... Yeah. Yeah. doing that because you've done these things if you've yeah. already spent a thousand dirhams in a certain direction what you should be able to do is is draw a line under that and then yeah. say do i go left or do i go right now left is more money in the same direction right is something completely different but your mind is telling you oh well i've already spent a thousand dirhams yeah. here i should spend more yeah, yeah. an example is you buy a ticket to a concert yeah it's in abu dhabi you don't want to go you would never normally go but because yeah. you've already paid for that ticket yeah you're going to Put yourself in that car. You're going to drive all the way to Abu Dhabi, yeah. and you're going to go. But yeah. if you didn't, if you hadn't spent that money, you Could would be a reversible decision. Right? Yes, but yeah. now you're, make, you're yeah. going to make a second bad decision, something you don't want to do, only okay. because you've already spent that money. So it's the sunk cost fallacy of like, I should do that because I've already spent time, yeah. money, and effort in yeah, it. Yeah. Now, going back to the understanding of the North Star and where are we trying to get to? If you are faced with a, a specific situation that you are investing time, money, and effort. If you don't understand what the payoff is, or the payoff is just not worth it, you should quit. Yeah. Like if you go, yeah, yeah. if you realize you've got to spend an extra time, money, resource going in this direction, and even if it all works out, it's, the results it's not, still yeah. not that great. Yeah, yeah. Then you should quit and go in a different direction because why are you why are you doing that? Sure. So it's understanding, it's having the the power and the I suppose the fortitude to say this isn't working. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try something else until you're on to something that is actually going to work out. There are obviously many factors yeah. around that. You yeah, don't yeah. want to disappoint people. You don't want to let other people down. But it's you need to weigh up all of those. But understand that that under, that knowing when to say no or knowing when to quit is actually just as powerful as knowing when 100%. to say yes. 100%. And also uh, you touched on the currency and, and investment into a certain direction. I think identifying what is the most valuable currency for you mm. and keeping a measure on that because for me, you know, time of course is 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 the yeah. most valuable currency and I think as soon as you start dealing with your time in the same way that you deal with currency you'll start very quickly making those decisions because if you're spending 12 hours a day in a direction that's maybe not giving you the return on investment from a time mm. perspective, you'll then reevaluate and reassess, you know, is this a direction I want to take? Yeah. Um, but a lot of people don't value their time enough. 
to 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 remind them that actually what they're spending their time on isn't valuable enough. Yeah. And that's why you see people spending, I don't know, five, six hours a day on things irrelevant, right? So absolutely. So taking time as a currency is, is a super important. Uh, and if you method. don't value your own time, there is no way that anybody will, will value, value your, your time, time yeah. right? So 100%. critical. Mate, that was super cool. I really enjoyed that. I hope we added some value. Thank you very much for, for tuning in and, and for listening uh, on a, what are we today? Wednesday morning. Um, <laughs> I hope you got something from that. The guys are going to chop it up, put it out across channels. Uh, please do let us know, you know, drop some comments um, on the podcast, drop some comments on any of the content that you're seeing across social. We really do appreciate it. Any ideas around what you would like us to talk about or... Even if, if you want to join on the podcast, if you come on the yeah, show, yeah. just um, you know, if you want to join us, then let us know. You can come in and have a coffee with us in the studio, and it will be cool to see you. So, thank you so much for listening. Appreciate it.